Welcome to part two of the potting soil mix versus the straight earthworm castings. If you haven't been following along, you might want to go back and watch part one and part 1.5 in this series to get some more context. But the gist of it and what we're doing here is doing the first experiment, except we're doing it again and we're going to be using plant food on top of everything else. And I wanted to point out before we continue on here that here are the seed sprouts. These are the Roma tomato seedlings. You can see here that yet again, the seeds sprouted in the potting soil, but not in the earthworm castings. Now, I did have success doing it one way uh, before, or I should say a different way, and that is basically just putting the seeds on top of the earthworm castings and then sprinkling just a little dusting of the potting soil on top of the seedlings, and it seems to work. Anytime I've ever put them in the uh, earthworm castings, even if it's only just under the surface, they tend not to sprout whatsoever. I'm not really sure why, but I've seen the exact same thing happen here, I think. So because these have already sprouted over here, I'm going to have to take half of these and then transfer them over to this one here, uh, because otherwise if, if I wait and these don't come up, this whole thing is going to uh, be spoiled and I'll have to start over again. I don't have time for that, unfortunately. Now we already know initially the plant is usually going to grow better in the earthworm castings and that is because there is double the amount of nitrogen in the earthworm castings versus the potting soil, but both of these have very little NPK to begin with, so if you look here we're only seeing 0.6 nitrogen on there. That's a very, very low amount. It gets used up rather quickly, but um, the plant that grows in the earthworm castings will overtake the ones growing in the potting soil initially, but as we give it plant food, it, we might see a different result. All right, it has been a week and a half since the last segment of this video, and we are off to the races here. Quite a bit of growth since then, and just like in the first experiment, part one of this series, uh, we are seeing here the ProMix plants are growing a little bit faster than the ones over here in the earthworm castings, and Eventually what will happen, what should happen is, is the ones in earthworm castings will start to uh, grow a little bit more uh, versus the uh, ProMix just because these have more nitrogen and these will start to slow down eventually. Uh, also, I'm seeing the exact same thing happen here. Uh, the plants over here, it's gonna be harder to see on the video, but these plants here are slightly more green, darker green than the ones in the ProMix. It's happening exactly as it did in the first uh, experiment it did in part one. Now. The seeds that I had in this pot initially actually started to sprout, and, and quite a bit of them actually. These are the ones that just came up um, a couple days ago, and the ones in the center here that are larger are the ones that I transplanted from this pot over here. So actually when I moved them, the half of these over to this pot, it was like they didn't even care. Uh, they kept growing exactly, exactly at the same rate as these, and it was no problem. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna thin these out. I'm gonna leave uh, two or three of the larger plants, uh, and then eventually, probably in the next uh, couple days here, I'm gonna start giving both of these plant food before they start showing any signs of deficiency. And I'll come, uh, come back and update it then. Okay, it's been a few days since I called out these plants, and I figured it's time for a little update here since these have grown uh, quite a bit since then. I did have three in each one of these, and I recently pulled out the third one, so now I'm left with two in each. If you look over here in the potting soil, uh, you can see that both these plants pretty much look very healthy, and there's uh, really not any deficiencies to talk about yet. The stems are the same size, the plants are the same size, and then in the earthworm castings here on the right, it's the same story, except these are just smaller plants compared to the ones on the left. Smaller stems, and they still are a little bit darker of a green color, but I have noticed here, it's not major at all. It's very minor, and you can barely see it because mainly because of the white balancing on this camera. Um, the, there's little yellow spots in the leaves here. Not a lot of them, just a couple. And that kind of indicates me, to me a uh, potential deficiency. Um, I don't remember which deficiency, which deficiency that is offhand. I don't think it's a disease, uh, disease or anything. But if I remember correctly, in the first part of the series, the first video, uh, the ones that were growing in the potting soil were larger uh, initially. And I believe that's because there's a some sort of a growth hormone in that potting soil. I think it says it on the package. I, I'm not certain about that, but I thought I remember reading it. It's not so much the nutrients that, or the nitrogen or anything like that that's causing it to grow faster, it's more of a hormone. And I think what happened in the first video, uh, the ones in the earthworm castings, even though they were smaller to begin with, they did end up being the larger plants 
Uh, and that's mainly because uh, uh, there wasn't any uh, nitrogen left to go around that was in the potting soil because the earthworm castings have twice as much. It's still a very small amount, but they, it does have more. So I'm expecting to see at some point uh, these plants here will start evening out. The ones on the left will start to grow a little bit slower and the ones on the right will start to just overtake in size. And at that point, when they start to even out, if that happens, and I start to notice here on the lower leaf, uh, if I start to notice that start turning less green or, or more of a yellow color, that's when I'm gonna start giving both of these plants uh, the fertilizer or the, the nutrients, I should say. And then from there on, we'll see what happens and see which one actually grows better. I have to wait for that to happen um, to, you know, to use up all the nutrients that are in there to make sure uh, we give this more of a fair playing field here. All right, it's been about three more days, and as expected, the plants growing over here in the pure earthworm castings are uh, starting to even out with the ones growing in the potting soil. And I'm deciding to actually leave two plants in each uh, for this experiment, uh, just because I'm kind of going off, I guess, power by numbers sort of thing, or a bigger sample size, as some might say, but Anyways, if we take a look here, these two leaves, well, we're just looking at the one anyways, and if the white balance and the camera would work better, um, it's starting to turn just a little bit yellow. And that's telling me that it's starting to become, just just starting to become deficient in nitrogen. Um, it's where the ones over here in the earthworm castings, as expected, um, aren't really showing any signs of that at all. So these stems, you can see, uh, these still look like the, like they're the healthier plants. Um, the spots in the leaves, like there's a couple of these little like yellow looking spots, just like I was showing over here in the other part of this video. And um, the, the leaves over here on these plants are, they, they do appear a little bit bigger than the ones over here in the earth, earthworm castings. And this, that's the same thing that really happened last time. Uh, I'm not really sure why that is. They're getting the same amount of light. I do have a power meter and I measure that, but yeah, I'm gonna leave uh, two plants in each and it seems like that since they're starting to even out now, uh, this is when I'm gonna start adding the, uh, the plant food. So I'll be adding plant food going forward. And if I haven't already mentioned, I use this watering cup here. I, I pour, I fill this to the top exactly, and then I water each one of these so that they get the exact same amount of water. And I'll be doing the exact same thing with the plant food. So I'll start doing that, and we'll come back and see what happens. All right, quick update here. It's been about four days since the last segment of this video, and I've watered both of these plants twice with the plant food since then. And you can see here, the ones in the soil are now looking smaller than the ones growing in the earthworm castings. About a, a day after I did the last segment of the video, uh, the plants in the earthworm castings were already growing larger than the ones in the soil. And I knew at that point it was, turn, it was time to give them the food, which is why I was talking about that in the last segment. But when I first gave these plants over here in the soil the plant food, uh, this leaf here, even on the bottom, wasn't fully, completely yellow. And these leaves certainly really weren't uh, as yellow as they are now, or really they weren't yellow at all. So. Uh, I thought I caught it in time, but it looks to me more like a delayed reaction. The new growth on top is looking pretty good, starting to grow again. So this is playing out pretty much as I expected and pretty much as, as I've discussed, uh, but it's time will tell. So once these plants are able to take up the nutrients I've been giving them, uh, it's going you know, to it's, it's take a little bit because they have to adapt and adjust to the new regimen. But this is, this is the whole experiment at this point is starting now. Uh, before I was giving the, not giving them the plant food, that was just uh, the setup. So at this point, this is the experiment, and going forward, we're gonna take a look and see what happens. All right, it's been about a month since the last segment of this video, and it's time to end this experiment now. And you can see here that the clear winner is the plants growing in the earthworm castings. Uh, now, I don't remember if I talked about this earlier in this video, but I wanted to reiterate here that uh, this is pure earthworm castings, but it is cut 50-50 with perlite. And I had to do that because trying gro to grow something in earthworm castings, straight earthworm castings, it's, it becomes like rock hard when it starts to dry out even a little bit. And then trying to water it is almost impossible. The water does not want to go down into it. So I don't recommend anyone using, using straight earthworm castings for growing anything. This is just for this experiment to test stuff. Um, so I had to cut it 50-50 with perlite so that I can get better drainage and a little bit of extra water retention. But when the earthworm castings 
uh, since they don't really retain a lot of water at all, it dries out very quickly. So that's another reason why I would not recommend using it. You always want to use only a little bit of earthworm castings mixed in with something like cocoa coir and stuff like that. So anyways, with that out of the way, uh, what I've been giving it as far as plant food goes is what I normally use for my um, hydroponic experiments. This is Maxi Grow. And I've been giving it double the amount that's on here because in hydroponics you're supposed to use, you have to use less uh, versus what you would give it in soil. So I've been giving this 10 grams per gallon concentration every day or every watering to every other watering. It just, uh, it just depends on um, what I felt like doing really, just kind of watching the plants and how they're growing and everything. Um, anyways, this sticker down here, you know, don't pay attention to that. There's nothing to do with this. That was from the other, one of the other videos uh, that were, where I was using that uh, Vitality product. Uh, so anyways, yeah, you can see this plant here. This is falling over, this is taller. Here's your comparison right there. And I'm really, really surprised. I was actually expecting there to be um, less of a difference. I was, I was kind of expecting the earthworm castings to still maybe grow a little bit better, uh, even with giving it the plant food, but it's, it's a pretty clear difference. Now, I may revisit this in the future, um, but right now, every time I, since I've tried out, tested out these earthworm castings, they've, all, <coughs> they've always done better. Excuse me. And you can see here, I've also actually uh, taper this light here because I'm trying to keep I was trying to keep the light levels the same for the tops You know because if this plant grows taller up and you know closer to the light now It's getting more light intensity and of course it's gonna start accelerating growth So I've been making sure I've been keeping that fair as well So with that all out of the way uh, I'm gonna go ahead and test the pH of the soils just just like we've done in the other videos and we'll, we'll see, what it, see what it looks like. All right, here we are. I got both of the samples. The earthworm castings is on the right here. And this is RODI water in here so that there's no pH influences as if you were using tap water, there would be a, there's a pH modifier in there from bicarbonates, um, at, at least city water anyways. So I scraped away the soil, the tops of the soils, and I took uh, the sample from about an inch underneath uh, inch from the top. So it's going to give the be probably the best representation of what the pH actually is. So what I did is I already did the first one. So there's a pH from the soil sample. It's pretty much right at 6.5 and it's just like it's always been ever ever since I've been testing these with or even before I was doing the earthworm casting experiments I've been testing the soil that I use uh, no matter what I've done with it. So this even with putting the um, plant food in there, it didn't really change the pH whatsoever. So it's it's always been about 6.5 uh, by the end of any time I've grown anything. So let's go ahead and test the earthworm castings. I have to rinse all this out first. All right, I got everything rinsed out and here's my sample. I did rinse everything out with RODI water just in case anyone was asking. Um, here is the color. If you compare that to what's on here, if you just actually, if you just look at what um, the last one looked at, this is a little bit cloudy um, so there is a little bit of a tint to it from like a muddy watercolor. It's not that much, and it's actually coming up darker on camera. I think it's just because of the the exposure on there. It's not that dark in person. Um, it's not 6.5. I can tell you that right off the bat. It's also not 7 either. It's somewhere between there. It's probably like 6.7, 6.8, something like that. Um, not really. It's, it's pretty much insignificant when you're talking about uh, pH difference in the soil, and really that would have been probably somewhat affected by the plant foods and the chemical interactions with the, uh, well, whatever's in the earthworm castings and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm really surprised. I really was expecting these plants to be, uh, well, all the plants to be uh, closer in growth, and it really wasn't. I'm actually pretty surprised that the earthworm castings actually did such a good job. Uh, I will probably revisit this in the future, but for now, especially with these past two or three videos now, uh, I, I think I have a pretty clear answer here that the earthworm castings does do something for potted plants. Outside is a different story, and I'll be talking about that in a, probably in a future video. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.